Over the undulating waves, we see a fishing vessel as it moves about the open ocean. It's a buoyant slaughterhouse underneath a blue sky, on which its crew works tirelessly, working to catch as many sharks as possible. Callously, we see how they sprawl them onto the top deck. We see how it takes them only a single hand, with only a single blade, its fins then sliced off. We see its blood as it runs across a nearby floorboard, a shade of glossy crimson. Soon after, what remains, we see them toss overboard back into the sea, left there to die, to slowly drown to death. With fins amputated, scavengers are free to nibble at its flesh as it lies there on the sea floor, leaving behind only a vacant husk. Many people believe that sharks pose a great danger to us humans, but in reality, we're the ones who are in fact perilous to all sharks, to their entire underwater realm. Herein, we will look at the shark fin trade, at the threats they're facing as a result, while also shedding light on their largely misunderstood, even demonized nature. Worldwide shark populations have suffered some significant losses over the past few decades. Simple mathematics would dictate that if we prey upon sharks enough, where the rate at which we're slaughtering them exceeds the rate at which they can propagate, their overall numbers will undoubtedly fall. It's happening right now, in fact, right before our eyes. A decline that coincides with the swelling popularity of shark fin soup, and consequently the shark fin trade. Everyone wishes to safeguard the cute, furry critters of Earth, like, say, panda bears or jungle tigers, while sharks sit on the conservational back burner. All told, up to 70 million sharks are culled annually for the trade, despite the fact that 30% of sharks are threatened with extinction. That's around twice the population of Canada, the number of sharks being slaughtered year-round. Now, it's totally fine if we choose to hunt mammals for meat or to fish the seas for food. To an extent, leading sovereignties must band together and impose a set of binding international laws pertaining to catch limits. Otherwise, many of our sharks may simply be finned into extinction. The effects of shark finning may not be so apparent from the surface, but the uninterrupted slaying of this apex predator will indeed have dramatic consequences, some of which more obscure, while others appallingly evident. According to Peter Benchley, an unspecified village along the eastern seaboard was once very much dependent on the ocean's bounty, mainly lobsters, for their livelihood and economic stability. He describes their exploits as being in perfect balance with the ecology. Quote, a seaside village whose people lived in harmony with nature. Close quote. Villagers took what they needed and left what was necessary. But then one day, off in the distance, locals spotted a ship lingering on the horizon. Some of the locals, simply out of curiosity, decided on going in for a closer peek whereat they found it linked to a thousand baited hooks. Villagers were confounded. It was only when a local diver went for a dip, when he saw hundreds of dead, mutilated sharks littering his seabed. Before long, bounties dwindled as local populations of octopi, lobster feeders, bloated to unsustainable heights. Sharks prey upon octopi, which in turn manage their numbers. The very balance of ecology, indeed a sensitive equilibrium, was left perturbed. By removing the apex predator, every species among the food chain's lower echelon was adversely affected. The entire ecosystem suffered. The shark fin trade is one deeply imbued with inhumanity. If people drove around the forests of Earth, capturing all the furry little animals, only to dismember their limbs, leaving them to slowly die of hemorrhaging, 
the voices of the world would certainly shout with scorn. And yet the very same atrocities are right now being committed, each and every day, except in this case, it happens far out of sight and against an unsightly beast. Shark fin soup is cruel and wasteful. Fins removed, the animals are thrown back into the water to die slowly and painfully. Such is the cruelty to which all shark finners adhere, the malice they borrow to steal their lucrative prize. Our sharks deserve far better treatment, and from us all, they command far more respect. Sharks are like the Earth's living ancients. They've been around since a time long before the dinosaurs, with a form left virtually unchanged since their inception. Sharks are one of the most thriving incarnations of life ever to evolve on this planet, a perfect predator, that is, before us humans were left to our own devices. For the first time in 400 million years of evolution, the very survival of sharks is threatened, wrote Alberto Angela in his book Sharks, Predators of the Sea. Here we can see the profound longevity of the clade, as well as the adverse tolls amassed by the human incursion. Much like the salvo from a battery of ordnance, we bombard the ocean depths, except it's with baited hooks as opposed to falling bombs. What will future generations think of us? Will they reflect back on the present in the same way as we reflect back on the era of slavery or the horrors of the Holocaust? At present, over a hundred different kinds of sharks have been deemed as being a globally threatened species. For the first time in their 400 million year evolutionary history, sharks find themselves swimming in hot water. In fact, nearly 30% of all known species are in danger of vanishing at some time even in the near future. Altogether, 126 of an estimated 460 shark species are threatened with extinction. Earnest consequences are being incurred by our own callousness and greed, and ultimately by the shark fin trade. Some say that the ends will justify the means, the ends being outrageous profit, the means genocide. But what exactly will this barbaric paradigm of thought even accomplish? It will only bring about ruin. Three, two, one. the horizon. Myriad horrors are being faced by our sharks and their habitat. There are some, albeit modest, conservational efforts set in place. But will it be enough to save our aquatic friends? In very few parts of the world are sharks welcomed by locals and respected by swimmers. Though the places in which they are feared, in which they are hunted down without restraint and without remorse, still vastly outnumber the areas of relative safety. Pressure from the public resulted in an international memorandum on whaling, but there are no international regulations to protect sharks. 
there is just this complete lack of concern when it comes to the preservation of these top predators. Must we cling to such antiquated zeitgeist? Will we ever stop detesting that which we dread? Lest international laws are never formed and imposed, sharks may be forced unto a state where they would exist only in the minds of others, as apparitions of thought. I don't know how else to say this to you, Lenny. You see something, you eat it, period. That's what sharks do. There can be no doubt that large sharks are like underwater monsters, a swimming mouth, an endless supply of teeth. But the widely held moniker of a mindless man-eater holds about as much truth as something like, say, the Cinderella story. In the mid-1970s, the film Jaws wooed the hearts of a great many, having labeled sharks as being this crazed fish out solely to terrorize beachgoers. But nothing can be further from the truth. Did I scare you? I'm sorry. Wake up. Wake up. Okay, don't worry about it. I'm gonna get you out in a jiffy. You just keep holding your breath, little wormy. Yo, lady! Ah! Uh, I'm coming, Frankie! Well, I'm moving. Come on, Pop's okay. waiting. Here we go. And gotcha! Okay, buddy, you're free. Now escape. Go. Just go. Cry freedom. <laughs> so it's foolish to think that sharks are the bad guys. They're just doing what comes natural to them. A 12-foot or even a 6-foot fish could do anything it wanted to a human. And they don't. Although sharks may appear as like ogres of the ocean, they're not mindless man-eaters out solely to seek the flesh of men. Sharks are no doubt some beastly and imposing animals. Yet at the same time, they're also some very majestic animals. Most of all, however, there's some truly misread animals. Until the day we all come to terms with the misunderstood, largely unknown nature of sharks, they stand little chance 
at persisting on Earth for another 400 million years. Although attacks on people do number in the hundreds each year, the probability of being attacked is actually far less than what most would probably imagine. And even more so improbable are the chances of being killed by one. The dangers they pose are virtually non-existent. In fact, even some of the most mundane and pedestrian of doings are more hazardous to the average person than any shark is, of any size or dimension. The fact is, sharks do not eat people. If they did, I would have been eaten a long time ago. Most sharks have teeth which are ineffective cutting tools and can't effectively remove flesh from something larger than their mouths. 100 needles in your leg would have a tough time removing a chunk of flesh. Most sharks lack the equipment they'd need to go after large animals like us, and they know that. They've evolved to eat certain prey items, and most sharks are picky eaters. You wouldn't go for a run next to a pride of lions, but we do this with sharks all the time. There are millions of people entering the water every year in areas where sharks hunt and very few people are bitten. If they wanted to eat us, they would. Come on, man! Don't hold out on me like this! Sharks are practically harmless to us humans. We're simply not on the menu. Death by soda pop machine, as it were, don't make for very exciting headlines, but shark attacks do. According to Time Magazine, the summer of 2001 was dubbed the Summer of the Shark. A catchy banner, no doubt. But think of this. What reputable media outfit would ever publish an article with a headline that read, Summer of the Soda Pop Machine? So when most people hear the word shark, the first thing that might come to mind are those beady-eyed killers being portrayed and perpetuated by Hollywood and the media alike. However, this assessment is just not concordant with the evidence of reality. Were the beady-eyed killers, were the ones who are perilous to their very survival, Though taking action is not the only way to aid in the preservation of Earth's sharks, and consequently the ocean's ecology, if only everyone voiced their contempt against the finning of sharks, perhaps we just might then save these lovely brutes, save them from ourselves. Sometimes a voice, a few passionate words, can have the power to change the world. In 1963, when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his speech I have a dream. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. His words changed the world. The more people made aware of the crises held by sharks, the more they pressed the powers that be then the greater the likelihood they might persist far into the gulf of time, such that maybe, just maybe, our grandchildren's grandchildren may too revel in awe at the power and elegance sharks so rightly embody.
something.